you know, it's tough right now. We're indoors. Entertainment is becoming limited by the day. So I'm going to do my best to contribute by submitting and uploading content which relates to business stories that I've been through, you know, highlighting certain aspects said by certain leaders in this regard we, we talk about Julius Malema and his speech at the business council black business council we addressed IPPs um, this video portrays what I went through as a business as an entrepreneur and as a consultant in relation to IPPs I hope you enjoy it my name is Brad Patton and my seven years experience as an accountant and wealth advisor has made me realize that people lack a functional relationship with money I'm here to help. We can talk all of this, but if we cannot stabilize ESCO, we are finished. Because all of this will require electricity. These uh, independent power producers, we must scrap them. They are benefiting the few elite that are connected to President Ramaphosa, to Patrice Motsipe, to uh, for, uh, former Minister of Energy, Jeff Harden. We need to scratch them. Who said ESCOM? Who said ESCOM cannot produce an, an alternative energy? If there is a need for an alternative energy, why can't we capacitate ESCOM to do the same? Instead of outsourcing this responsibility and giving to the family of the president yeah ESCOM independent power producers yeah I have a little bit of an opinion here because I have been previously involved with the IPP project and it was almost it was let's say it was 60% to 80% successful but the last 20% very difficult so yeah just to give a little bit of context you see the challenge of IPP project is that for anybody to fund them whether it's a bank or some sort of investor or whatever just like in any other investment you need to prove your return on investment right and obviously return on investment minus your cost of capital minus your cost of working capital just basically minus your running cost will equal the expected profit now we did everything in terms of the capital costs, understanding operational costs and all those things. The only thing that we needed was a power purchase agreement. Now, this is around 2015-2016. At those times, to get a power purchase agreement from a municipality, it was practically impossible. And that was the only thing that we needed in order for us to start working you know, or start start you know building this power station and start producing power for this particular municipality, and this is where now, from the beginning, I'll disagree with the fact that, you know, IPPs won't work. For what IPPs stand for, independent power producers, that concept can work. What doesn't work is the business relationships that have that are existing currently as he's saying the problem with this IPP program not an IPP remember IPP is the business model it is the business the person who comes up with an idea you know produces energy in whatever way that they produce energy and then they get paid that for me it works there's nothing wrong with that but what is wrong is and this is what I personally went through with my business partners then is that to get a power purchase agreement is a political job. It's very difficult for any business, especially if you don't have connections. If you're, and we, I mean, mind you, we had funding, we had everything. But because we could not get the power purchase agreement, nothing was going to move. And unfortunately, as Malema is saying right now, if you're connected, particularly if you're black, if you're connected, you will have a chance of getting a power purchase agreement because basically it's a guarantee of income. I mean, a power purchase agreement basically says if you can produce the energy, we will pay you. It's guaranteed income. Now, the issue is people want a stake of that guaranteed income. And that's the problem. You're only and therefore, you know, in terms of bribes and all these things, in other words, you're going to have to pay for you to get that agreement and unfortunately it's going to be a crap deal the minute that happens
and for me it's very it, it was very crushing for our you know project to not go forward because of you know this circumstance because at the end of the day we were looking to help a community that was going to you know really benefit there was so much economic promise starting with this i mean as you know as he says in, in in his speech that if energy is not solved we have a problem and this is 2016 guys four years ago so if there was no will then you know it just shows that people are, i mean our leadership is not in in you know they're not in the frame of mind to build and sustain the future we are only a reactionary society you know we only react to problems we do not invest in problems and yeah for, for, for that reasons i mean there's two sort of factors to it um i i agree with what he says we are not ready for that because people are politically you know some business people are unfortunately politically you know connected they are politically in conflict of interest and it's not going to be a fair process they're going to make billions and rather so this is where his solution comes rather give the opportunity to escom which is a very hard pill to swallow because now we know escom and its inefficiencies with all of its problems that they're currently dealing with that's the normal way of producing energy now they're going to be you know in charge of their own independent power i mean just call it a power power producer it's not independent anymore you know and that's for me the issue but i guess that's why he says it must be scrapped so at the end of the day i think there's many layers to be managed from his proposal he's suggesting managing how business is given let's manage who business is given to and let's rather internally generate capacity to produce alternative means of power and you know i guess for a short-term solution that could be what needs to be done in order to desensitize you know the the political hunger for power via this venture and when it gets to a p point where we're much more stable and we're able to you know do it in a f fair and proper manner then go back to independent power producers being invited because at the end of the day for me I mean, in, in Europe, this model works very fantastically that, you know, just like we have our telcos, your Vodacom, MTN and so on, you can have the same situation of, with, with power. Instead of your power coming from one source, how about your power comes from multiple companies whereby they fight for your business instead of it being a monopoly and they detect the price. Right now, I, I understand, you know, ESCOM has the possibility of actually winning the price hike case and we have nothing that we can say we're on our hope is in nursa and it's a very funny situation but you know in other countries in europe you know it's a bidding war and that bidding war is in favor of you know consumers because consumers at the end of the day they are able to choose which power producer i want to buy from preferably the cheapest in the same way you choose whether it's a telecom or vodacom or mtn or salsi based on you know your needs being provided for how nice would it be if that was the ideal situation that we're actually working towards too it would be nice right thank you for supporting us guys really appreciate it like i said i'll do more videos i really hope that you enjoyed this there's so much um that i have i will be you know uploading i will be doing so much to really educate and inform but also entertain i mean we need a little bit of relief due to the current times that we're in and yeah guys i really hope that you enjoy this please comment with suggestions what you whether you like this tell me appreciate it and i'll be doing more i'll be doing more videos for sure just trying to find a workflow that really works so thanks guys for your support and all the best